I welcome you to my talk, um, Drive by SSL certification, uh, Drive by SSL certificate creation with Engine X. Um, during this talk, you will see what I mean by this, what I have in mind about an ID, what 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 Engine X is. Nginx is capable of. Um, first of all, about me, I'm Dominic. I'm working for a hosting company back in Switzerland, and uh, we are compared to German market quite small, but we are in the top five of Switzerland or top four. Yeah, um, everything is factor ten smaller in Switzerland. Yeah, I'm mostly de um, developer there, doing a lot of backend security ops stuff. Um, yeah, that's why I'll, um, yeah, I seldom, seldom have to fix something on the website. That's not my, that's part of my team deal, but not mine. Um, you find me on Twitter on dear DOL or Dr. Dole. <laughs> it's also my nickname. Um, if you have questions, please ask right away. Um, and don't hesitate to wait at the end of the talk. Um, I came across a capability of Nginx when it was, when, when Cloudflare in 2004 or 2014 announced that they give away free SSL certificates for, for all. And they explained what they're doing. And, uh, I followed along the Nginx community. And, uh, because we used within the web hosting company that I work for, we used the Nginx and, uh, capabilities, the scriptable capabilities, and I thought that would be nice having such a feature. Um, yeah, and uh, recently there was a patch contributed by Cloudflare, and this talk is about this patch and the possibility. Um, what this example shows, it's like two, this year is 2015, and if Proscon has a SSL certificate that's only for this specific domain, has no SAN or WICA certificate, they have to reissue certificate every year. The same goes um, for if you're a pass provider. Um, good example is Slack. Maybe some of you know um, Slack as a, as a chat program. Each company has its own subdomain and uh, and I guess what they provide is a wildcard certificate. What would be really nice is having a certificate on the fly generation per subdomain. Yeah, that, that's the whole idea behind and I will introduce you the steps to build such a system. If it's reasonable, I don't know. It's, it's more a technical challenge than uh, 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 yeah, it's more a, it's not a real use case, but it could be. In the example of Cloudflare, it's, it's a good example. Um, about Nginx, um, <coughs> written and spelled, uh, it's, it's, uh, no, pronounced and spelled, it, it's a different thing. Um, Nginx itself, it's, uh, if you're familiar, um, little vote who's more on the developer side and who's more, who's on the, more on the developer side. Okay, who is responsible for server stuff and deploying? Okay, okay, it's like the majority. Um, then I, I skip this quickly. I guess you have, you know, the second most used web server. Um, his properties are his high performance, low memory footprint. He's a web server. He's also a proxy, a load balancer. You can caching. You can do caching. Since the new version, version 1.9, you can also do TCP um, proxying. That's a new feature that they introduced. Um, yeah, they uh, came along with uh, HA, HA proxy. Um, the whole system is event driven and has an asynchronous design. It started uh, in 2002 went public in 2004 and now in, oh, that's wrong, in 2014, nginx.com, the company was built to have a, um, a professional support. The open source domain is nginx.org, the commercial one is nginx.com. 
think of Nginx, it's like Batman. He's like, he can do a lot of things and he, he's great and he's established and yeah, he, yeah, he has all the good benefits and features. But what makes Bat, um, Batman really, really a superhero is that he has a lot of accessories that he can use. The same applies to Nginx. Engin Nginx has quite a small core. Nginx is in the core is capable of like doing HTTP stuff, SSL stuff, but not much. A little bit of logging, a little bit of load balancing. But in the ecosystem around Nginx are the accessories. People build uh, in uh, modules written in C to extend the capability abilities um, or the belt of Nginx. Um, a few examples, I, I, I took out, it, it's really Wild Wild West. If you're looking at the, at the third party modules, you see abundant stuff, you see stuff like a video thumbnail extractor or an upload process that's actually quite often used or a, a circle GIF that's generating GIFs on demand and resizing them. Drizzle is, uh, is also a thing that often used. It's, it's a MySQL um, a possibility to, um, to talk to MySQL within the Nginx scope and talk to Redis as well. Um, another thing that um, I can, um, here's a little example. That's actually two different third party modules. This one is the Echo module. It, you can Right, echo, that's not, not in the core, and it returns the value. And the other one, it's a, it's a Redis uh, extension, because the, the first one was shitty, they built another one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. No, it, 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 with, this, uh, with this example, you can set um, different, uh, different value directly to Redis or read and then do some dynamically, dynamic load balancing or configuration stuff. Another thing is Nginx because it's event driven. Um, it has different phases or different stage during the, uh, during the start of a, of a HTTP. Um, request and then handling and finish it off. Um, there are some steps in between. I left them out because they are mostly pre and post stuff, configuration um, read and write. Um, the important one are the rewrite phase. Um, in this phase, you can you could apply like um, um, different rewrites uh, how Nginx is is um, behaving. Access phase, uh, it's normal what you know about HTTP authentication. Um, try files is looking at the file system uh, content. Uh, is, um, yeah, is delivering content out of different file system, database, different backends. Log is uh, after the process is done, it's get locked. And then you can apply filters if the request is like at a stage where you can push back to the, to the client, you can do filtering of the header and the body. Um, an example you can see here, it's, it's like the echo example. Um, it's in the content phase. And the, and the set is, is actually in the read-write phase. And, uh, and if, you, if you write a C extension, you have to decide in which event you hook into the Nginx core and what are uh, what are the changes you're applying and because there are different modules you can yeah you can sometimes mess up stuff from other people um, then Batman would be nothing without Robin Robin in my talk is Lua Lua actually is a programming language Lua is fast by design, not, not by design, but because it has a very, very lightweight design. It has, um, a good example is uh, learn Lua in 15 minutes. That's a, that's a web page. You can, can, if, if you're familiar with programming, within 15 minutes, I can assure you, you, you are capable. This, the syntax is so easy. Um, yeah. 
Um, embeddable. Embeddable is one of the features that, that, that Lua is famous for. Means, um, for example, Far Cry and a lot of game engine have the possibility to uh, write mod modifications in Lua and they expose different uh, uh, modification possibilities. Um, you see um, embeddability also in in uh, in the automotive industry where you have simulations and then you hook, hook can hook in um lua is used in 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 network switches as well to do um packet filtering and on the fly um script um, giving the scriptable language possibility to to hardware boxes that that's actually from the 50 minutes it's not the whole part but you see the syntax is quite easy you have no types. You have it. Uh, numbers are always doubles, and uh, you have double and single quotes. You have multi-line. You have nil. If you nil something, it goes to garbage collector. Then you have loops and if else, and there are some other constructs. You have what, what you know from different uh, uh, programming language ha hashes or arrays. They um, have tables. They have no class support like object oriented you can do people do stuff but no rich functionality it's mostly um, procedural procedural uh, programming um, in the end um, um, lua is as well has a lot of accessories um, lua comes with a rich variety of different modules. They can be written in, in, in Lua or in C itself. Um, what I mean by this, it's, it's a good example for this is a MVC. Uh, it's a web framework um, that's entirely written in, in Lua that you can use. Um, Lua file system, it has some um, C extension to hook into the yeah, file system itself. Um, C JSON as well. Um, it's like a C JSON implementation exposed to Lua. Um, what do you what you also have in the in the Lua space is uh, Lua Rocks. Lua Rocks is a um, if you're familiar with yeah, easy install pip npm all these different package manager in every language. It's it's quite limited compared to other tools that I saw, but most of the time it works. It works because people are not depending much on each other's modules. Like like the thing that you can see in the JavaScript community, like two lines of code is a known module and everybody inherits these two lines and yeah, then, then you need like circle the dependency re resolutions and, and, and conflict resolutions. Lua has only a little part of this. Um, Lua, uh, Lua Rock, sorry. Lua Rocks is capable of like uh, compiling C base code. That's quite a nice thing. Uh, if someone ships uh, uh, C embedded Lua functionality uh, with Lua Rocks, it, if you have the right dependencies on your OS operating system, then you could install this module. And as always, um, there's an awesome language um, GitHub account where they some uh, um, where they have a lot of summaries about different different uh, tools and stuff about this ecosystem. Then there is Lua JIT um, because um, Lua JIT was started as a project uh, because the core or the the, the language itself is so small. Um, 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 a guy, can't remember his name, started the Lua JIT project. And uh, now you have the possibility to either use Lua or Lua JIT. As the name JIT for just in time compilers is saying, it's like if you run this code in a continuous way, it optimizes on the fly. Um, a lot of code. This is very useful, um, for example, for in a in a web server where you um, where you'd like to apply um, web application firewalls, like 
these rules have to be run over and over and over again, and they get the hot, and they get hot, and they're optimized and compiled to to machine code, and then they run. They say 10 to 100 times faster than the normal Lua implementation in itself. Um, one of the main drivers behind it is Cloudflare, Cloudflare as well, because uh, now they ship, I don't know, like around 10% of the traffic worldwide. And if they could optimize Lua cheat by, I don't know, 5 or 10%, they gain a lot of um, cap um, cap capacity. Um, think of Lua cheat, it's like Robin on steroids. It's like, <laughs> um, the also nice part about Lua Jit, it, it compiles on nearly all systems and all um, process architectures. And has, um, is, it's binary compatible, means that you can switch from Lua to Lua Jit and it, it has the same syntax and it works. Um, yeah but it works also on a PS3 or PS4, which is quite nice. Um, one thing to remember or to take away, um, they are uh, Robin and, and uh, or Nginx and Lua, Robin and Batman are two heroes, enhanced with a community, with tools behind it. Um, that's the foundation for a safer street, but, um, um, that, that's not enough. You have Nginx and you have Lua. Now we go, we go to the part where these two are combined. And now we are at Nginx Lua or HTTP Lua module. Or the other name you can also find is Lua Nginx module. That's, ref, that's actually the, the, the Lua, um, the, Package name, that's the name on the documentation, and that's the GitHub name. It's kind of confusing if, you, if you're searching for the thing. It's, it's all the same, yeah. Um, what, what it means, it's like embedding the power of Lua into Nginx. Here is a small example. Um, you, you'd like to get the content. Content by Lua means within these brackets, you write normal Lua code and it's get interpreted and uh, you can, and, and it's, print, it's printing out hello world. That's uh, basically the thing that, that, that's the integration. You have a lot of these, you have init by Lua, init worker. Init it's run once when the server starts, when a new master comes up. Uh, init worker is, is when the master process forks a new worker process. You have set by Lua. In the, in the previous example, you have you seen set as a, a directive of Nginx. Now you can dynamically set things in the scope of Nginx. Uh, rewrite access content, log, header filter, and body filter. These are the, 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 um, these are the phases where you can hook into Nginx and modify it by yourself. And it gained some attraction because you saw this wild, wild west of C modules. Um, and people started migrating their code into Lua because the burden of maintaining a C extension in an ever-changing Nginx core was too difficult or too time-consuming compared to Lua that's that's always stays the same or more or less stays the same. And that's the reason why you see, see nowadays a lot of modules and, and stuff moving to the Lua world and old stuff are ripped out or is dying off. Um, another thing that is possible is uh, Lua by, uh, um, asterisk by Lua file. That means in, um, the difference here is um, you, you write this directly in your uh, Nginx configuration, and here you can specify a, um, a specific Lua file. Um, I 
always would recommend this way because you can see the burden that you have with uh, double and single quotes within uh, within the nginx configuration. It's there's a fix on the way, but need some time. And there's also another benefit. Um, you can see uh, it's uh, Lua code. The Lua code normally, when if it's embedded by um, by Lua file, then it's compiled, meaning um, the Lua cheat compiles it in into an uh, optimized way, and then it's always interpreted from this optimized way. During development, this is this is your every single character that you change in the Lua, Lua file, you have to reload nginx to get the to get the updates uh, into your nginx. That's one of the tricks that you can do. It's that you, um, during development, uh, disable the cache and then you can edit right away and you always see the new updates if a new request hits, hits this, uh, this Lua specific uh, direct, direct, ah, sorry. Um, another thing, it's, um, these are the parts where the Lua, the Nginx Lua API comes in, means within the scope of, uh, of Lua, you have to talk somehow to the web server, meaning that you need some API to talk to the outside world of Nginx. Um, the first thing is uh, Nginx Arc. It's something like you have on the console, on the Bash script, or or in every other language. It's like parameters, parameters passed in. There's some some situation where this happening. For example, set by Lua, you can pass in parameters or in the in the filters, but that's rarely the case that you work with them. Most of the time you work with Nginx vars. Um, a good example is outside um, vars always has to be out, declared outside of the Lua scope, meaning that during the life cycle of a request you could change the values. This is very handy if you have, um, for example, at this point um, going to a proxy or to a proxy um, upstream and define the variable or variable of the proxy and in the Lua code you could do health checks or you could do a load balancing or intellig intelligently um, uh, load balancing algorithm and so on and so forth. If you, if you set the variable in the in the right phase then you are okay, um, then nginx is performing like proxy stuff with this modified um, with this modified uh, variable um, another thing is nginx header uh, it's used to read and modify headers depending on the stage if you are past the if you pass the the, the if you pass the lock phase, you're not able to modify them anymore. Um, Nginx status is the HTTP status that's sent back to the client. And Nginx context is also a handy thing if you have to pass information between phases, meaning you have a rewrite phase that writes some information, extracted some information, and you need this uh, on, a, on a content phase, you can do um, context. It means if if you're familiar with Android, it's it's like you you on an Android system. If if you switch the view, you have to you have to um, assign all the information on a context and then switch the view. Otherwise, this information um, are lost. And that's quite handy if, if you if you passing states or information um, along with different phases. Is that clear? Okay. Um, other things in the Lua API, Nginx Lua API, are the output stuff. We saw like Nginx say, send headers, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, you could do redirects, exit, uh, sub request. Um, I come to this later. And co sockets. Uh, I have some example about these two. 
Um, Nginx Capture, it's a nice thing. Um, what you could do, it's um, you could do like advanced um, cookie checking or spam checking. In this example, um, what, what we are doing, it's like we're capturing during a process, we do a sub request within Nginx and waiting for the response. And then we interpret, as, this is like a HTTP request within a HTTP request. And you can do, even you can do multiple, um, multiple uh, captures. Um, there's a, a capability of, of doing parallel uh, capturing and uh, ag aggregating the information and sending them back. Uh, a useful example for this would be if you have a central login server, uh, you could uh, always use Nginx as a proxy and he's checking against this login server, are these credentials sent by these clients are valid? In this, um, yeah, for this reason, I, 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 um, I let him pass, otherwise uh, um, I deny the access. Uh, an example that I used to implement was like a MailChimp newsletter. Um, I, w I wanted to have a custom uh, newsletter um, subscription form, and normally, um, and what I've done, it's like posting on my own website, capturing the stuff with Nginx. Nginx sends it to Mailchimp server um, the, with um, with the API credentials attached. They are actually within Nginx, and then I uh, modify the response that I can, um, yeah, differentiate p between different errors on the front end side. These are the, the these are the possibility that you could do uh, with capture. That uh, yeah. Another thing, it's a co-socket IP. Um, a thing about uh, Nginx within these phases, everything has to be non-blocking. And uh, in the Lua, uh, in the Lua sphere, normally you have uh, you have these uh, Lua modules. And then, um, for example, a simple HTTP or Redis uh, implementation, and they use a, a, a blocking socket underneath. Uh, meaning, if you if you use this um, if you use this library within Nginx, it's not going to work because uh, if a request comes in and, and, and you're blocking while um, waiting for Redis to give you an answer, um, every other request has to wait until Redis gives you an answer. And for that reason, Nginx request soccer was introduced, meaning giving the user the possibility to do non-blocking um, socket connection, TCP connection, there are UDP connection as well, um, but uh, not much space on the slide. But you, what you do, uh, you have to do, it's implement a protocol on top of the socket, meaning like, yeah. Um, a nice feature about this is uh, you can use keep alive, meaning that uh, if you're not closing the connection, if a new request comes in, it reuses the keep alive connection. It's a uh, Handy thing to, uh, yeah, to to get uh, more performance out of it. Um, a good example are the Redis, Memcache, MySQL, Postgre integration. DNS is actually a UDP um, implementation. Um, what they look like, it's like you include the Red, um, the Lua Redis clients that's crafted for. Um, for Nginx or work within Nginx, and then you do your no normal um, manipulation, reading, writing. Um, then there are lots of more stuff um, that you could do with Nginx and Lua. Uh, for example, um, you have light threads. Um, you can run some work offload. I've seen people doing a job queue within Nginx. That's a, that's a funny thing because uh, you have init by worker. You could do things with this part, and uh, it's, it's it's a strange thing in light threads. Uh, yeah, it actually works, but yeah, it's somehow scary. Yeah, 
um, shared memory access, um, meaning that uh, because you have one master process and you have a lot of uh, four worker processes, um, you could share a caching layer um, over all these uh, um, worker processes, meaning that, uh, uh, yeah, and that's, how th that's the reason why there are some basic hashing algorithms within there to, uh, yeah, to, to help with the cache. Also, regex um, is directly in the core for modifications and stuff. That's basically it, and there's some, yeah, some tiny little things that I never counted, and yeah, they are there. But but it's not cluttered. It's it's quite small. The, but you have with this uh, capture and uh, co socket thing, you could do a lot. Um, meaning that if you combine these two, you get a Batmobile. It's kind of cool. It's like you have Nginx, and then you have Lua. You could do a lot of programming. But the problem is, um, um, you have to build it. It's an, it's an own module. You have some people wrote on GitHub a, a Redis integration. Some people wrote the MySQL integration. And that's where OpenResty kicks in. OpenResty, um, it's actually a combination of Nginx, Lua JIT. Um, they used Lua JIT. They could also use uh, Lua as well. Um, Nginx Lua, I mean the integration, um, RESTy Lua modules and CLIPS, meaning like uh, aggregating a lot of stuff from, from the community and packing it in, in, in the right space that you, ha that, that you have a rich environment that you can start with and a, a normal make file. That's very handy. It's, you download, um, open RESTy, make, make install. What it's doing in the background, it's more or less, um, first of all, it downloads Lua JIT, compiles it, embeds it in Nginx, compiles it with Nginx, and as a Nginx with um, um, with all the different C modules, Nginx C modules and Lua modules, and then place it on the on the correct um, system. A thing that's not happening at the moment it's it's there's some, at the moment no distro packages what i normally do i build distro packages myself they are not that complicated and i'm in touch with the creator of the open RESTy project uh, but he's so busy at cloudflare he's yeah i guess i have to contribute stuff um yeah there's also docker image existing and yeah and but if um, about RESTy modules. It's, the RESTy modules, as you saw, you have modules coming from Nginx extending the Nginx core. You have modules coming from Lua extending the Lua modules with Lua or Lua C. And the RESTy modules, it's, it's always a mix between, I don't know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's also a little bit wild, wild west. Open RESTy project try to like uh, only include um, modules that are, that, that are well maintained, that work, that are tested. Um, actually, the testing of OpenResty is quite impressive. If you, if you ever go on the OpenResty webpage, go to qa.openresty.org. Um, they have heavy testing. Um, yeah, and that's the reason I never had any issues. and. Uh, with OpenResty in our infrastructure. Um, another thing is, if you have to install things that are not bundled with OpenResty, please use Lua Rocks and install it on one specific path. And within Nginx, you then can include um, this specific path of Rocks um, into your um, current environment and then use the installed uh, yeah it's it's not very easy you have to get used to it but but once you use it you 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 um, yeah you get it going um, if you need a BMW um, take Kong Kong is actually a open source project from mashable ape it's a kind of a 
how to yeah they do a lot of API load balancing authentication and stuff and what they built they call it microservice and API management layer what they actually took it because open has 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 the things that you can build your application on top of it what they actually done it's going um, a step further and uh, for example what they included is uh, is a, a central um, login uh, layer or JVT um, decryption layer and so on and so forth central logging server and uh, meaning that um, in a in an ever changing environment you um, you have an API where you can manage your Nginx configuration. That's kind of a neat thing. You can add SSL host, you can add hosts, you can add authentication information, you can local and shut, shutting thing down. What they use is a Cassandra cluster on each node and uh, the information are shared in this. Uh, yeah. Best, you, you, if, if you, if you need something, and, and they have a pluggable system, meaning that, uh, like in, like every one or two months, they bring out a new, um, a new plugin that you can enable or disable a little bit of configuration, and bam, you have a new API endpoint where you can manage X, Y, Z. That's kind of a cool and neat thing, and uh, gain some attraction in the, in the, in the, in the microservice Docker community. Yeah, because that's a, that's a big deal to dynam dynamically uh, load balance thing without changing engineers um, configuration. Um, one thing to take away is uh, use ready built tested solutions. Uh, looking at Open Resty, uh, if you like to be more on the basic side, or Kong, if you if you'd like more or less production ready stuff uh yeah take the fast lane in compare in, in association with uh, batman and dropping take the fast lane of crime prevention um and now to the thing of my talk um what i was thinking or i i i often um, i'm Active in the open recipe community, we use it within our company for different services. And recently, there was a there was a patch about SSL um, by Lua, meaning that uh, you could um, secure your SSL connection controlled by Lua. And Batman and Robin, they have the same problem. Recently they were tapped and now they have to introduce new mechanism to make them safe again on their phone. Um, this is actually a patch. It's not right now in Open Resi. Um, it will be, as I mentioned, the creator of Open Resi is quite busy at Cloudflare. Um, what, what they newly introduced is SSL certificate by Lua and SSL certificate by Lua file. What it's actually doing is, uh, it, 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 it's a step before the process even happens, you know, um, that you could do, um, SSL generation, SSL delivery, um, OSTP checking, stamping, um, there's a heavy discussion on issue 331 on the Open uh, Resty project. Um, there's at the moment is there's a branch you can compile it. Um, what, what I've done, it's I took the branch and I, I took the Open Resty project that's doing all the compilation and stuff and swapped out the Open Rest. Uh, the, sorry. Because Open Resty is downloading Lua Engine X module, I swapped out this uh, this download with the download of this branch. And what I had to do, it's like at the moment you have to patch the engine core as well, because Open Resty downloads the Engine X core, downloads also the Lua Engine X module. And what I had to apply, it's like changing the, the branch. In the download and patching the Nginx core before it's built. That's that's the thing that I had to do. It's not that tricky. 
Uh, yeah. And the thing is powered by Cloudflare, uh, meaning that they run this since, I don't know, 2013 or 14, I don't know. Meaning that it's definitely battle testing. That's the thing that's driving their SSL free for their customer. What they're actually doing is uh, um, they they partnered with a with a CA. Um, I'm not sure if it's global sign. And what they are doing it's like combining a lot of domains, um, generating SAN certificates. And what they have to do internally, if if a domain or a S, uh, they only support SNI. If a SNI request comes in. They look up in which certificate, which certificate belongs to this list of SANs, and they, they have to fetch their um, certificate from the backend. And because they have like around 30 to 40 data centers, they have to do this, this, this um, on a distributed way. Um, they do it on the fly. Otherwise, they had to they have to um, send a lot of SSL certificates across the globe. Um, Meaning, if if I hit now here a, a Cloudflare instance that's not that's not having my SSL certificate, it gets fetched on the fly. And it's kind of a neat neat thing. And I was inspired by this, and uh, I can show you a demo about what I've done. Um, wait a second. Switch to the other screen. What uh, my setup is the following: I have a, a Vagrant box running. Uh, oppa. Sorry, I have a Vagrant box running with Nginx and my Lua code. And uh, what I could do is, if I requesting, if I uh, ah, wait a sec. Obvious. Sorry. Uh, now, um, what I actually, what I'm actually doing is the following. If the scroll is working. Um, I open an SSL client connection to localhost. Giving a server name, meaning a SNI connection, test dot drive by dot tld. Um, giving a CA file, meaning that uh, certificate authority file um, for validation, meaning that uh, checking the certificate that I get back if it's uh, if it's if if this CA um, signed this certificate, and and what we see here. It's uh, it's verified verification chain, and what I add dynamically generated by Lua at Saturday uh, eight forty because of time zones um, on my machine and in the Vagrant box. That's actually the two hours uh, um, difference. Um, if I hit it again, meaning uh, I could get I get the same, but but a little bit later. Now it's forty four. And the CN, the common name. If I change it, um, I need to take the short. Then you can, the, then the information are here. Um, if I pass in another subdomain, subdomain life uh, 2015, for example, then I get a new. Um, as a name, meaning the certificate is valid, but uh, the, um, uh, I gen the Nginx core generated on the fly uh, SSL certificate and then return and is returning. Um, the same uh, I can show you with a with a fresh Firefox. <laughs> Problem if you work with Firefox and. Install a lot of demo drive by TLT. Yep. Nope. 
Nope. Not working. Ah, yeah, now now it's okay. Um, th the thing is that I, ah, this stupid. If I connect it to the internet, then the thing is, uh, I have a DNS mask entry within the uh, DNS mask uh, set up within the network manager. And uh, yeah, if if if, it, if I'm not connected to the internet, then uh, DNS mask within network manager. <laughs> It's not responding. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, but but what I wanted to show it's like what you could do on the fresh in installation of Firefox, you could add the certificate authority, adding a new certificate, and then I can go to every subdomain and I get a valid uh, um, a valid uh, browser certificate or no no warning. Um, Is that example clear what I wanted to show? Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. The actual code. Oops. No. Of course. Sorry about that. Not starting at the point now I left off. Um, the, the code in Lua or in Nginx, it looks uh, like this. You first of all, I include the module REST SSL. That's um, that's an extension coming from this uh, SSL patch. Um, then I need OpenSSL for the whole certificate generation, key generation. Um, P key means like there's a public key cryptography. Uh, then I uh, require a CSR, uh, a certificate sign request. Afterwards, I load in the CA, meaning the certificate authority um, um, certificate. Um, load the thing from the file into an object that's actually the certificate. Then I could do manipulation on the thing. The same happens to the key of the of the authority because with the key of the of the authority, you have to sign the new generated, uh, um, the newly generated uh, key uh, certificate. Um, what I then do if it's not a SSL server name, meaning if it's not a if it's not a SNI. Uh, if someone connects not with an SNI name, it's uh, yeah, we we drop out because of this limitation. Then I start with a new um, certificate request, meaning the subject. Um, that means the region generated by it, and you see here that's actually the date. It's always included, and from the SNI name, the SNI name will be the so-called common name. And what I then do is generate the new public and private key pair for the um, for the for the new certificate. Afterwards, I assign the key to the certificate and generate an, uh, um, a certificate request. The certificate request then. Um, from the certificate request, a new certificate is, is issued. Actually, I had to change this because Firefox is uh, is blocking. But this is the C uh, serial number, meaning that uh, the certificate authority have to increase the number of the serial for each certificate they issue. Uh, Firefox is, is actually checking this. Um, I had to do this morning a little bit of hacking to overcome this issue. Um, now it works. Uh, it's not actually the, the, the code on the on, on the on the server is not the same. A um, little bit modified, but but it's 
it's more or less uh, in the same thing. And then I set the time of uh, the validation time, and what I then do it's like taking this. Uh, the naming is wrong. This meaning that the client certificate or the certificate is signed with the key and the certificate of the authority. And here is that's actually where the magic happens. I guess in 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 Cloudflare it looks like this. The thing on the top is is uh, the generation and signing is is somewhere offloaded. Um, and meaning that the only thing that they do on the fly is capturing the response and a certificate on the fly and setting in it and caching it on the local server. What, what, what we then do is clear the certificate that we um, had uh, in the Nginx configuration, set the um, certificate in the, in the format of the dare, meaning a binary string. Um, yeah, converting the binary string to uh, the, the certificate into a binary, and the same goes to the private key of the um, of the public. Uh, sorry, the same goes for the, for the private key of the new generated certificate. That's all the thing that you need to do. Uh, it's not, at the moment. It's a little bit of tricky to get everything right, but. I, I think in the future you see a lot of application. My first idea was at the moment if you heard about Let's Encrypt, that's an initiative from Mozilla, Akamai, Cisco. They try, they, they build an automated system to get you free SSL certificate. And my initial idea was going to an upstream server, to the um, Mozilla server, generating a valid public um, certificate is reissuing it on the fly, meaning that every time someone hits the server, I get a instantly uh, valid certificate. I never have to think about reissuing or stuff. Everything I can write down in Lua. If someone hits the first time, he has to wait, I don't know, two seconds off or something, um, or I don't know, a minute, then the request response, but the request afterwards, it's okay. Then, or I could do a cron job that that is doing that every night. Yeah, that that was the basically idea. At the moment, we are implementing this for our web hosting customers, and during this work, we saw that the, that the API and the specification is changing too radically. That I could adopt these changes all the time before the talk. I had to. Yeah, I started with the adoption, and I ran into the problem that, uh, that actually the, the Open SSL project had a lot of issues. First of all, I had to fix a lot of C code issues within this project before I could go on, and that's why we have only a simplified version of that. Um, Needless to say, um, secure um, security. In, uh, securing in a <clears throat> in an ever changing system is hard, but it's also possible that you can introduce like security layers or dynamic stuff on on the web server. Yeah, at least you can try, but don't produce snake oil. Um, one of the pitfalls that I learned um, during my years and also preparing for this presentation. If you do a lot of Nginx configuration modification, please always run service Nginx config test. I had the, sometimes the issue that I thought um, I had changed something, made a reload, but, the, but actually if you do a reload and you have config issues, uh, Nginx is doing nothing and say nothing, says nothing about it. Like, and that's the reason why I always do service Nginx config test and then a reload. Um, the same happens to if you do a lot of config changes. I have a when change is a little small Python script. Um, if the file changes, I SSH into the server and uh, do a config test and reload the server. 
Um, I also uh, fell into this trap, like the escape characters in Lua. It's a uh, percent or uh, yeah, not not very intuitive, but better than uh, better than uh, Ruby. Um, and as I mentioned, always use Lua by f um, file. It's uh, it's easier to handle with and no escaping her. If you'd like to read post wars in an access phase, meaning like one of the rewrite or access phase, then you have to do an additional request head body, meaning that in the phase of re rewrite and access, Nginx has not yet loaded the, um, the, the body or the post information. Um, tips and tricks, debugging in an Nginx environment, especially in a dynamic Nginx environment with Lua, it's not easy or actually hard. I, had, yeah, I was burned many times, like little pieces that, yeah. Um, one of the things that I often do is like adding debug information to the header information, meaning like aggregating information. You could log all the information, but the thing is, on the log, sometimes on a busy server, it happens so much thing. Uh, what you could do, I have special tags, and if I specify this hidden tag, it gets me uh, like a debug output on a live server. Somehow, that's just kind of a cool, neat trick. Uh, what, what you actually also could do is like generating uh, a, a, a tracer, uh, tracing ID, and then piping, uh, you know, or uh, giving this trace ID as a as a header parameter parameter to the web server and then um, going through your logs that's also a possibility. But I found the nginx header dump uh, the easier. Um, and if you're looking for code uh, or useful example, actually the OpenResi project has very good tests and and uh, for this SSL talk I had to look many times. We, um, in the code, because it's at the moment is not yet documented, and there are some conditions where the documentation lack. Yeah, and I'm at the end of my talk. Um, thank you for listening. Are there any questions, regards, or concern about the stupidity about this project? Yeah, um, in front. Norm, what I do now, it's, it's kind of a silly example. I generate for each request a new certificate. That's kind of stupid. It, it's not, it's not. But what you normally could do is offloading money. Um, as I mentioned, people doing worker demons within Nginx, you could do the same. It's like if the first request hits the server, you could offload this to worker, then it's then it's in his own worker and it's not blocking the other requests. Yeah. But you could do, or, okay. No, they run under the Nginx user. Meaning that I had to, give world permission, or at least for the CEA, uh, for the um, um, CEA certificate, I had to give permission to the, to, the, to the Nginx user. Yeah, but normally you do this in a secure backend, and then you get, yeah. 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 Um, for that reason, I need the private key to sign. Otherwise, no, no, no. My my use. 
yes, this use case, yes, but the use case of Let's Encrypt, for example, I go into a HTTP backend and they give me an SSL certificate. I could also program that I log in to the complicated website and do web scraping of global sign or something else that's, that's not limited to this because with Lua you have the capabilities. Yeah, but for, for this purpose, because I'm not a CEA, I have to trick the browser to accept me as a CEA. Yeah. But uh, the, the initial idea was going to an official CEA where they have a REST API where I can, where I can issue. Yeah. Okay. So far, Bova Yashkiti, and uh, thanks to Agent CH, that's the guy behind uh, all the RESTy stuff, and Cloudflare for the contribution. And hopefully, we'll see some of you in the OpenResty, Nginx, Lua community uh, playing around. Thank you so much. <laughs>